Well, it is always a treat to be able to pick the brains of one of the greatest footballing minds in our country. Today on our One Soccer One-on-Ones off-season edition with an asterisk, it is Bobby Smyrniotis of Forge FC. Bobby, great to see you again. Thank you so much for carving out some time for us. I know you have just arrived in Mexico. The, the preparation for CONCACAF Champions Cup is very much on. So aside from trading the winter weather for the Mexican heat, how are things going in forge land right now yeah everything is good you know it's uh, it's an early start to the season as uh, as we've experienced before uh playing in the in the champions league or the new champions uh, cup and it's just exciting to be back you know that's the most important thing uh, that we have you finish the season on a high you enjoy things for about a week and then uh, you plan for the next one well, this month coming up is obviously going to be a busy one, but not unique to you and your club. And that's where I'd like to start, if I may. How do you feel preparations and the the boys in general are handling their second time getting ready for a CONCACAF Champions Cup? If memory serves, eight of the starting 11 when you had played Cruz Azul at Tim Hortons Field are still with the team. So this is a big dance, but it's it's not their first time at the ball. I think the biggest thing is we look at 2023 and, and the hunger of the group was to get back into these competitions. You know, having won in 2022 and the, the restructuring of the tournaments last year by CONCACAF left us out of CONCACAF play for the first time in five years. And I think that's something the players missed, uh, missed dearly. Uh, it was the driving force uh, to last season and here we are. So, you know, this is something we all want. As a club, we want to be able to to play these games. We want to be able to come in and play against the the Chivas uh, of our of our region, and now we're giving ourselves a very good uh, opportunity to prepare for it by being down here in Mexico um, for the next two weeks and uh, and having some good friendly matches down here. Well, certainly one of the things that makes this dynamic unique is with the Apertura and Clausura and Liga MX that you have a Chivas side in form. And I'm sure the players knew that this was coming and were trying to balance some Christmas or holiday turkey with some sprints every other day just to keep themselves in shape. But when when you look at the situation, the timeline, this isn't unique to the CPL. Major League Soccer sides deal with this too when we have, say, an early start to the Canadian Championship. Uh, how are you approaching that? Because fitness is obviously going to be key and I'm sure it's going to be something you're focusing a lot on in Mexico yeah the first thing uh, we look at is uh, you know making sure the guys come in in a, in a good base and uh, from our first uh, 10 days of training back home in, uh, in Hamilton I think uh, the guys have come in in an excellent uh, situation maybe a little bit better than we thought because you have those two weeks where it's not uh, as easy to keep on uh, your regimen of training but the guys are in a very good spot you know the unique thing is here is you're preparing for two games you're not preparing for a season um, so there's a different mm-hmm. approach to do that the the approach here is prepare for two to play another two uh, and that's what uh, we need to be able to do and not so much uh, training the players uh, to have the tanks ready for a 28 plus uh, game season so that's the uniqueness of this um, I think we've uh, created a very good plan uh, in uh, in preparation and, and just trying to make sure we've got the right physical attributes in the tank to put together with the tactical side of the game for these two games coming up since we're far enough away still from the game, I don't mind asking you to be a little nostalgic here because there's some time before it's full game mode. When you reflect back or in conversations you've had with the players and their families from that first experience, let's start perhaps with Cruz Azul coming into Hamilton. Uh, I know I look outside my window right now, not too far from the stadium, and there's snow, and it's an adjustment for them. What what do you remember of leg one? Uh, going back to Cruz Azul, it wasn't cold enough. That's what I remember. <laughs> I remember I remember it being, you know, minus five, minus eight going up to the game. And then all of a sudden it changes to, uh, you know, plus five, plus ten. Uh, the colder, the better, Adam. That's what uh, we want to see. But, you know, what we saw was uh, us walking in the field, being very aggressive, uh, doing the right things, creating a lot of chances in those first 30 minutes. And that's what we need to take advantage of, you know, when, when we look at a, a game coming up as playing at Tim Hortons Field and, and taking the whole environment into stride and making sure it's playing into our hand as opposed to our opponents. Well, the first 30 minutes were great, if I recall. It was, I think, a goal in the 31st minute that I would think the only one in Hamilton there. Do you approach leg one different? Obviously, you want to win both. You want to give the best competitive effort of all time that you can for this this monumental game. But when you think about Chivas leg one, is a result at home as crucial as it possibly can be? I think so. You know, when when you look at it and uh, you look at our opponent, it's a quality team. 
their season just started this past weekend and obviously they've got a new coach and a, a little bit different way of doing things that we've already seen uh, in their first game uh, as opposed to what we've watched uh, from, from last year. Um, but yeah, we need to make sure that uh, we give everything we have at Tim Hortons Field. I think, you know, that's that's the big goal is is to make sure that we've come out with a positive result to go play for everything in a one game situation uh, down in Guadalajara. And in football, when you do that, uh, we know it is forged. We've been into different places. Uh, magic can happen. And these nights are very magical. Well, the magical moment that I think Forge supporters especially will remember, of course, David Schwanier scoring the first CanPL goal or CanPL player to score in Champions League. I think everyone who's watching this program now knows very well that Dave is a very cool, calm, collected guy. How long was he smiling after that goal? I know he's disappointed by the result, but that had to be one that uh, even a player as reserved as he can be can appreciate the magnitude of it. Yeah, I think those are moments as a player, as a club and everyone involved, you know, you you, you want the results in the game, but then when you reflect, you, you realize on uh, on what you've done as, a, as an individual player. And all those moments are something that you want. That's why we play this game. You, you play it for, the, for those magical moments, whether it's winning trophies, doing something special, qualifying for Champions League and, the, and what we did in, as a club in, in 2021. Um, so these are all moments that define a club and also a little bit define the player as, uh, as they keep on going in their process and, and developing in this game and, and creating moments for the clubs they play for. Well, magical moments, a uh, departure, if we can, for a few minutes here, just to talk about the Canadian Premier League final. I remember the night being pretty special the first time, of, of course, a club, the home club wins the CPL final, the celebrations that ensued, seeing friends, family on the pitch, the confetti, and, and just three wonder goals. And, and for me, the most underrated moment of the match, the turning point for me was the Tristan Henry point blank save on Jesse Daly. All of these things that came together. Now that you've had a couple of months to reflect, and I'm sure that that North Star Cup is looking pretty good at Tim Hortons Field in the trophy cabinet. When you think back to that game and how it all came together, even just aside from Forge, but from a from a from a football perspective, what do you think of? First thing is I'm happy you didn't fall out of that seventh floor window. <laughs> now, that, you wouldn't have caught me? Is that what you're suggesting? I, I remember. Well, I kind of asked Jimmy after I saw the video. I said, Jimmy, you were too close to him there. Uh, <laughs> no, all, 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 all kidding aside, it was a uh, I thought it was a it was a fantastic night for football. You know, being able to win a championship at home. Uh, having done it in, in different ways uh, on our end, it was, it was something special. And I think, you know, when that final whistle went and uh, personally I turned around and, you know, I saw the West side stand full, you know, that's not something that's that's normal at the, at the stadium other than a few uh, big games. I think there you get the emotion of uh, we're on the right track to becoming a lot bigger, a lot bigger as a club, a lot bigger as, as a league. And I think that's what I take from, uh, from, that, uh, from that night at, uh, at Tim Hortons Field. You're going to win championships in your career, and uh, we've been blessed, and I hope uh, they keep coming. But I think it was all of that. It was, it was the environment and just looking around and seeing what has been built in Hamilton as being a, as being a person who's been there since day one uh, and always striving for, for these types of uh, moments, uh, for this culture uh, to be able to build in a club. I think that's the culmination of everything I got from that night. I remember a few years ago when we were doing these types of interviews with you, the the, the off-season check-ins, you had a line about the, the competitive window in the CPL being two or three years. Now, you have obviously extended that, and that's a testament to yourself, Jelani Smith, the players, everyone at the club. But now that we're going into year six, one of the interesting storylines is at the time of recording this interview, all eight of you gaffers are back this year. It's going to be, we're waiting for the schedule to be announced, but the format should remain the same. Everyone knows what's at stake. How have you been able to balance that injection of new blood a la Benny Badibanga who comes in and scores a huge goal in that final to the core that you've built and, and those tiers you've talked to you talked about I remember the CPL final you specifically highlighted you're going to have those CPL lifers and they're so important to a club because they keep that culture that consistency you bring the new guys in you sell some of the younger guys on how have you balanced that and, and how has your approach with Jelani and everyone else evolved over the years as well to try and stay competitive yeah i think it takes a, it takes a lot of work um you know we've we've got to, we've been blessed with some very good players uh, both domestic um internally from our area across canada and then our international players i think have been uh, have been spot on and i think you always need to find that that right balance um you know the toughest thing for us is is to keep on motivating players that uh, that have been here for a while and we have we have a few of those 
And, you know, players have all the opportunity to keep on moving and going into different leagues. But I think we offer something very unique at, the, at Forge, you know, from our daily environment at Tim Hortons Field, which is a world-class facility, and all the access and the infrastructure we have there. You know, it makes a big difference for a player who comes into uh, work every day uh, to feel comfortable, to feel um, that he has an ability to, to become better. Uh, and then on the flip side is we just have to keep on working. We have to keep on looking at the market and looking at those special places. And that's an interesting point we're at right now. You know, playing this early in the season, you know, you have to make decisions. Uh, are you bringing in players because you have two games in front of you? Or are you patient because, you know, you've got the... Uh, two or three targets uh, that are available in February, March. And it's taking that that right approach uh, for the long term is something we've always done here at Forge. Uh, and I think we've, we've shown that in the way we go about things, you know, bringing in players like Benny. Uh, Benny wasn't a player, you know, that we saw a month before we signed them. We knew him from the beginning of the year, um, tracking that whole situation. And then, you know, the timing was right to, to bring him in. So I think we look at a balance uh, from all of that um and how we we build things and uh yeah we hope that players uh, enjoy playing here that keeps them around a little bit longer until uh, until their next step and it's all part of the culture building and what we've done here at the club if you may a, a gift for the the football roster nerds who are still with us after nearly 12 minutes here just to make sure that, that we understand the roster rules when you're building this roster the contracts when they expire how does that overlap and connect with an off-season tournament like champions cup are you needing to sign someone by say jan one is it before a certain tournament like what are some of the deadlines that go into your roster construction because i remember the likes of a kale lockery trialing for champions league last time through but but not cracking the cpl roster yeah so we have that flexibility at this at this moment to, to be able to bring on players without you know being under let's say a full uh, full cpl contract um with this uh, situation so that gives us flexibility with some of our u sport picks who have been very positive as they've come into camp you know we brought them in from the from the first day and the and a few others so there's some flexibility that we can have there you know there's roster constraints with CONCACAF that we have to look at certain dates preliminary rosters going in in about a week and then you know a week out from the game you you're kind of locking up your roster but, you know at this moment you know we're, we're very happy with where we are I think fans may be happy that for the first time in how many years uh, Forge actually uh, put a uh, list out of players that are coming back you know about uh, months before a season as opposed to uh, the weeks that may be a, a little bit of a change in philosophy with the uh, the Spignotis brothers uh, shuffling in the front <laughs> office. So a little bit different way of doing it. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of uniqueness. There's a little bit more flexibility in what we can do now um, because, you know, our locked up roster is something that pertains to the CPL and that comes along, I believe, in, in April 1st. So there's a lot of time from now. We can do the math until then to make sure that the right players are coming in here that fit our way of playing, that fit our culture as opposed to uh, switching things up just because we want to bring in a player here or there right now. It's very nice of you to say that it wasn't because I've been groveling to to you, Costa, for years for those to come out just a little bit earlier and say it's for the supporters, but I appreciate it nevertheless. I'll leave you with this since we're talking about roster. Um, there's obviously still to, much to build, but two big losses. Mandrakar James goes to Alejuelense. Maybe you see him in the quarterfinals and Wubens Pasillas decides uh, he's ready for a new challenge. Just how do you go about replacing arguably one of your if not your best defender and one of arguably your best attack yeah i think the one thing we've been able to do is uh, is always uh, uh build from within you know i think one is we've got players in the lineup that step up and play and, and do all the business and guys like garvin Matusala, you know this is a year for him um to be the player there and then it's about you know seeing you know is there addition of player or are we we're promoting a player like maliko walabi balabu who's you know had consistently good matches, has played in a lot of big matches for us and done an excellent job. You go back to 2021, his first season, and he's, you know, he's taking care of business against TFC in the uh, Canadian Championship final. And then up front, you know, we're, we're comfortable. We've, we've got goals. Uh, but what we want to do is make sure we're bringing in one more top quality player. And that's where we're going to be patient and finding that. And we, we may see him in a week, we may see him in a month, but that's going to come. But, you know, Taron Campbell's in our lineup and, uh, you know, last time I checked, he scored the most goals in this league and, and Jordan Hamilton's a guy who has goals, you know, not as much playing time as he would have liked, missed the, about two months due to injury last year, but he's a guy that can bring, you know, seven to 10 plus goals in this league. Uh, once you have a combination of that, a healthy Schwanier, 
uh, a healthy Borges who's coming in, in great shape to training, then we have a lot to, to look forward to. So it's about, you know, really adding some pieces uh, that make us even better in those positions. And that's what we're looking for. Well, we're certainly excited to continue to follow the progress over the offseason. Incredibly grateful, Bobby, that you carved out some time for us down in Mexico. Preparing for Chivas Leg 1 is just around the corner. For us, watch. For those of you watching on YouTube, if you can always drop us a like, comment, subscribe. Ask the girl, I'll ask the question, who has the better beard? I know the answer, but if you comment below, it helps the algorithm. <laughs> Bobby Smirniotis, thanks so much for joining us. Talk to you soon.